guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. Right now I'm inside the Shelby GT350R and you know what? Finally, I found a way to talk to you guys. I have to keep the car in quiet mode because in loud mode, it just it gets way too loud in here and I can't imagine how loud this new 2020 GT500 is going to be. I wonder if it's going to be louder than the R because the R does rev much higher than the 500. I would love to find that out, guys. Anyways, guys, we have a lot in the Mustang news today. Now, Ford just recently revealed that the new 2020 Shelby GT500 goes 0 to 100 back to 0 again in 10.6 seconds, which is a very interesting number because it's not really the number I think we expected. I think we've been waiting on the quarter mile, the weight, and also the 0 to 60 this is uh it's pretty interesting hearing this number instead because there's not many vehicles out there that we can actually compare this 10.6 number to that is pretty fast though it really is and i think what's most impressive about it is that this vehicle you know for a fact it doesn't have the 2.8 seconds 0 to 60 that some of the exotic supercars have and for it to pull a number like that that is actually comparable to the exotic cars is is actually very surprising and i think it's a very good number that 10.6 number is slower than the 570s mclaren also the 720s and the tesla model s it's not the fastest number out there but you got to realize another thing though it did that entire run within 800 feet that means this new 2020 gt500 accelerates like a freight train honestly i can't wait to find out how fast this car is going to be on the racetrack because the one thing the gt350r is missing and the normal gt350 is missing is that of the straight line punch the straight line speed and with the dual clutch automatic transmission with 760 horsepower it's going to make a huge difference on the racetrack especially with the vehicle actually putting that power down to the ground the corner exit speeds are just going to be incredible also in the news, Ford has finally released the speed at which this new DCT can actually shift. Now what Ford has said is that this new DCT can shift within 80 milliseconds. That's faster than you can blink an eye. That's so much faster than the A10 that you find in the normal Mustang GT. Now you may be wondering, well how does that translate onto the drag strip? Because we know that the A10 in the normal Mustang GT is incredible for drag racing. What Ford has done with this new DCT is that they've incorporated certain shift technologies depending on your drive mode. So what's going to happen is that when you're in drag mode, every time the DCT goes to shift, it's going to engage a certain shift technique called over torque. Essentially what this means is that it's the equivalent of well, what a power shift is. This is going to allow the vehicle to always be in the power band. And thinking about that, you may be wondering, well, how does that work when you go onto a racetrack? Because as you know, you wouldn't want the harshest shift when you're mid-corner, for example. What's going to happen is that the vehicle is always actively adapting to whatever situation you're in. So on the racetrack, it can tell if you're mid-corner or not, especially when you're in track mode, and it'll adjust the shift type for whatever scenario you're in. So let's say I'm mid-corner going very fast, pushing the car, and when I upshift, what it's going to do is that it's going to maintain a shift so that it doesn't upset the balance of the vehicle. That's exactly what you want. Which is why I think this DCT is going to be the perfect transmission if you do want to do crazy hot laps on a racetrack. Now let's say that you bought this new 2020 GT500 and you never intended on taking it onto a racetrack. Because I know many people out there don't actually track their vehicles, which is perfectly fine. It's really, only certain buyers really track their cars. Well, Ford has a special mode directly for you. For all of us who like to spiritedly drive, we have sport mode. And what sport mode is going to do is that it's going to increase the shift speeds by 20%. And in normal drive mode, what's going to happen is that the car is going to maintain perfectly smooth shifts so that it's not abrupt. You know what, guys? Let's go ahead and take a look at this press release. And you can see it right there. This new 2020 Shelby GT500 achieves 0 to 100 back to 0 again in 10.6 seconds, thanks to the largest front brakes of any domestic sports coupe and the available carbon fiber track package wheels, each wrapped in four performance spec Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. 
Scrolling down even more talks about the raw power and the ultra fast shifts thanks to this new DCT transmission. And below that, we're greeted by a quote from Ed Krenz, Ford Performance Chief Program Engineer. Now, Ed Krenz is a super nice guy. I have talked to him in person before, and he seems very passionate about this new Shelby GT500, which makes me even more excited about the car because, quite honestly, it tells me that this team of Ford Performance Engineers have really put in all they have when it comes to building this new Shelby GT500 and making it a fantastic vehicle. So again, I can't wait. Anyways, he says this, the range of brute force drag acceleration, seamless road shifts, and amazingly smooth shifts on the track further show the soul of this new Shelby GT500 is elevated in our most advanced Mustang ever. And it effortlessly handles the 760 horsepower thanks to the Tremec DCT. And right after that, towards the end of his quote, he talks about how it helps to deliver an experience once reserved only for exotic supercars. Basically, I'd say the major talking points within this article are that of the 0 to 100 back to 0 10.6 second time and the 80 millisecond shifts. The one thing I do want to focus on, though, is that of the acceleration time for this new GT500. Again, 10.6 seconds. The question is, how do we compare this with other vehicles out there? Because not every car out there has been tested in this format. So after doing a bit of research, I think I've found a very good competitor for this new 2020 GT500 that we can use this time against. Now Motor Trend did have the chance to test this new Hellcat Red Eye in the same exact format, that being 0 to 100 back to 0 again. And the time is very interesting. That being the new Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye did the run in 11.8 seconds. That's 1.2 seconds off the new Shelby GT500. The Hellcat Red Eye has more horsepower than the GT500. It has 37 more horsepower. Yet this new Shelby GT500 got a better time. Which could be the result of a few things. First of which is a faster 0 to 60, or just plain faster acceleration once the car gets the power down to the ground. Or this new Shelby GT500 breaks from 100 miles an hour back down to 0 much quicker. I think it is a given that this new Shelby GT500 does break much better than the Hellcat Red Eye. That is simply because it is lighter and also it has much larger brakes, that being 16 and a half inches. So that aspect of it does make a lot of sense. My question to all of you guys is, what do you think? Do you think this new Shelby GT500 will accelerate faster than the Hellcat Red Eye? As we all can see, this new GT500 is faster than the Red Eye in this exact test. However, what does that really mean? We still don't know the 0 to 60 time, the weight of the vehicle, how well it brakes, and the quarter mile. Hopefully we do see that information very soon. I'm literally counting down the days. Other than that, that is really it. This new GT500 does shift much faster than the Hellcat Red Eye, so that also does help the acceleration time. What we do know though, is that this new Shelby GT500 is not only faster than the Hellcat Red Eye in this metric, but it's also faster than the new hybrid Acura NSX. And the 2016 AMG GTS, also the Camaro ZL1, the Dodge Viper ACR, the Nissan GTR, and a Porsche 911 Carrera S. The list just keeps going on, but the horsepower also does go down. In this metric, the new Shelby GT500 is slower than the Tesla Model S P100D, the McLaren 570S, the Porsche 911 Turbo S, and the McLaren 675 LT. For those of you who are fans of the McLaren F1, this new Shelby GT500 is almost a second faster. Anyways guys, that's going to basically wrap up this press release for this new Shelby GT500. Now, if you were wondering about the process of ordering this vehicle, well, I have ordered the 2020 GT500 with the carbon fiber track package and the painted over the top stripes. From how it looks now, it seems like the 2020 GT500 Mustangs will start production sometime in the middle of September. The great news is though, it seems like people are starting to get VINs for these vehicles. By the looks of it, it seems like the production for the 2020 GT500 Mustang will stop during the winter months. That is from November to March. And that's due to the tires of these vehicles. The super high performance summer only tires that you find on these 2020 Shelby's actually crack in freezing temperatures. And then production should probably start up again sometime in early March. At least that's what I'm thinking. Funny thing is, this is the exact same thing that happened to my 2016 GT350R. 
back when I ordered it, production stopped during the winter months because of the Cup 2 tires. And then I think they started building my car sometime in March. I'll make sure to give all of you guys tons of updates throughout the entire process. Anyways guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Also hit that like button, it really does help me out. And subscribe for much more great videos to come. I'll see all of you in the next episode.